What's going on, everybody? Adam from South Harmon Fantasy Football, here to bring to you again a really exciting episode near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about dynasty buys and what we should be doing with our dynasty rosters moving into week three. Week two is already in the books. The season's already coming at us fast and furious, and whether you're ready or not, the train is on the tracks or depending on what players you've selected, a lot of trains are off the tracks, and things have already gone awry for so many teams, and it's not really a question of if things have gone wrong for your team. It's just a matter of how much they have gone wrong. Before we even had week one, the Madden curse is back. Christian McCaffrey does not suit up on Monday Night Football. Puka Nakua already on IR for the Rams. And while Cooper Cup went off in week one, now looks like he is possibly going to go on IR. If he's not on IR, he's definitely missing some time here. We also have now Pacheco going to miss what is reported as six to eight weeks. Jamar Chase still doesn't have a deal, and that's a very interesting situation in Cincy. And while all the other guys, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, everybody else, did end up getting their deal, T. Higgins did not get his deal, and even if he doesn't feel locked up, we are sure as hell going to be having his hamstrings locked up on him. Jordan Addison's out of lineup. A.J. Brown missed Monday Night Football, and we have a whole damn tier of tight ends, starting with Ferguson, and then Evan Ingram hurts himself during warm-ups in Week 2, and David Njoku really is starting to get everybody back in the Christmas spirit extremely early. We already have an elf on the shelf. Right now, you're probably really wanting me to come through and tell you we had all this attrition, so many players get hurt in weeks one and two, that moving forward, it's going to be more likely that these type of injuries don't continue to pile up. I would love to do that, but what I'm not going to do is start off this season feeding you that type of a whopper. Whopper, 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 junior double, triple whopper. The truth is, we're really just getting started, so I hope you don't have a weak stomach. And here's the thing, people have been basically looking at their rosters for months on end now, Wrapped in bubble wrap. Nothing can happen to it. So while you're ready to go out and spend these draft picks that you have faster than the stimulus to try to fix a few holes in your rosters, I just can't bear to see you in week five now when there's bye weeks and more attrition looking at your roster and trying to figure out how to fix it then when you've already used up all the flex seal. To show you the incredible strength of flex seal, we took this old pickup truck and turned it into the Flex Seal Submarine. It's the coolest sub you've ever seen. Imagine what you could do with Flex Seal colors. Well, unless of course I'm sitting on you first. But in all seriousness, slow down. I know things are happening, but you don't have to go and make permanent decisions for your team in its future when we don't know what the future is. Think about how much has changed, how many things based on what you believe or did not believe going into the season is actual reality right now. And everybody kind of has their thing, right? Their favorite time of year is Christmas or their birthday, whatever holiday it could be. For me, this is holiday season when everybody is getting a week or two weeks of the NFL season. They're ready to predict what's going to happen for 17 games and who is going to help them win the title and guarantee a ship. And everybody likes to talk about buying stuff. And while I came out here with the mindset of having three dynasty buys, it's time to pivot. I've seen what you guys have been doing on Keep Trade Cut, our good friends over there, but this is exactly what makes it the best time of the year. You can't pinpoint and predict exactly what's going to happen. And even if you're just like a weatherman and you never miss your predictions, this is the exception to the rule. Fantasy football, you can't pinpoint what people are going to do. Even when you think you got them all figured out, they are going and they're willing and they're able to throw you the biggest curveball that you've ever seen. And while it's fun to make it rain and put it on social media and have everyone see that you're throwing money around, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. And unfortunately, while I was just starting to get enjoying the ride, I realized we're going way too fast and way too far. It is time for me to get off. I'm pulling the emergency brake. And for the first Dynasty sell of the year, we're going to see if you can name that player. Over the last five days on Sleeper and Real Money Leaks, gotten you Jalen Waddle straight up on three separate occasions. Has gotten you Chris Olave straight up. And while on IR, if you want to go buy Puka Nakua, attach a second to this player and you are at Puka Nakua on not just one, but two occasions as well. Any idea who it is? Well, if you've been thinking about Rashi Rice, who's not currently suspended and is playing really well in these first two games, that would be logical, but that is not who we are talking about. We're talking about Brian Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. is a high speed freak, absolutely blazed at the combine. His speed, it's not really surprising to see when he has these highlight plays in the NFL that people are really turning their heads. And I think this guy actually offers more than just his home run hitting ability. I think he can turn into a really complete receiver. And I'm happy to see that everybody has decided that not only can he turn into one, he is one. This is him. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Brian Thomas Jr. is off to a blazing start in his first two games in the NFL, earning four targets in week one and then another four targets in week two, and where he caught all four targets in week one and caught two passes in week two. Between those eight targets and those six catches, clearly this is a shelf life that's here to stay with four targets apiece. 
I mean, what could go wrong? Listen, I certainly get his upside too, and I'm not saying there's not room for him to improve and grow in the role that he has in Jacksonville, but this is a team in week one and week two scored 17 and 13 points, still has a lot of questions to answer. The options are endless right now with Brian Thomas Jr. If this is currently what the market is reflecting anywhere near in your leagues, for me, there's so many different tier down options once you start to get to that wide receiver 15. If you could give me a second even to get a very similar player and archetype as far as the targets and the upside that I think he has in a better offense currently in Houston in Tank Dell. Now that's a money move. Nah, nah. I I'm not letting you get away with this. I gotta do this for your own good. And here's the thing, I knew that was bait. That's bait. And even though I knew it was bait, plain and simple, Amari Cooper is my first dynasty buy because he was most recently traded for Jamal Williams in a third. I get it, I get all the narratives. Wide receiver 83 for the first two weeks as far as fantasy points scored. And he's been a massive letdown. L let's say you're right. Let me just oblige. Let's say you're right. You're correct. He's cooked. His career's done. His production and dynasty value both go in the sewer. He's dead. Could be the case. But what I can guarantee you is for that trade, you have most certainly traded him for what already is dead. The type of dead that I'm talking with Amari Cooper is he has not been breathing for a long, long time. Action. Will you vultures please give us some privacy? He just died last night. What is going on here? I've seen too many dead bodies. I, I can't, no, no, I, no, no, I can't no, no, be no. in here. Amari Cooper right now is currently wide receiver 13 when it comes to targets in the NFL. Tied with CeeDee Lamb, he is getting an opportunity which is putting him in the range of 144 targets right now for the season. When you go back and look at all the recent history, when you get to 140 targets in North, even the receivers that weren't very good that got those opportunities. Deontay Johnson would be the lowest finisher at the position, wide receiver 30, and that was on a season which he literally did not catch a single touchdown. Darnell Mooney finishes a top 24 receiver with a season with Andy Dalton and Justin Fields on one of the worst passing teams in the NFL that season in the Chicago Bears. Stop it. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. Now, while I got dynasty money moves for you, I definitely have my limitations. I can't actually print money and I'm actually not allowed to give in any way, shape or form, any capacity, any type of financial advice. While that's all true, got something for you. Wait till you see the specials that I have pulled up and found. Recent trades on Sleeper, Jamal Williams in a third for Amari Cooper. Zach Moss straight up on multiple occasions. Brisket in two thirds. Marvin Mims in two thirds. Zamir White, while clearly not taking over this backfield, but we'll get you a third with Zamir White. Now that we got all that change out of the way, a lot of nickel and diamond going on there. If you wanted to tear down for Mark Cooper, shout out to uh, the sponsors and make sure you put this down because if you go to make this trade, I got a little promo code for you here. Make sure you put this in at checkout because when you trade Amari Cooper for Jalen McMillan, when you go ahead and use promo code ATMs Money Moves, get a third back. Now, before you go making any trade offers and throwing any money in the air, just I want you to have an understanding of what the market is because while I know you think he's shit and you are convinced he's going to be shit for the rest of the season, rest of his career, that's what everybody else thinks and they're currently treating him like shit. So before you go making some kind of crazy offer, Make sure you know what the market says and just be aware that you don't have to send as much as I would. So as long as you have a backup plan, you have some draft capital still on your side and your team is built right. If Amari Cooper can be had for a late second or less, now that's a money move. I thought there's no way in the world I would come out here and tell you we don't play in these Mickey Mouse leagues and no one's going to be pushing a player that's extremely talented after two weeks significantly down the ranks, right? But here's the thing, the more I dug, the worse it got. So if you think in your leagues that there's any outside chance, and I know it's hard to believe, that Roma Dunze could be had after merely two weeks of his NFL career, one of which in week two, he was notably playing hurt at this point. If you think Roma Dunze can be had, you have got to go explore it now. Two weeks into the season, this Bears offense does not look anywhere near ready to be an elite contender. And while this offense clearly has a lot to work on, offensive line is not great. And while they're both extremely talented, this is a rookie quarterback in Caleb Williams and a rookie receiver that was playing hurt in week two in Roma Dunze. And while better days may be ahead, nobody's treating it as such because we didn't see it in the past. Now, I'm certainly not going to get in the way of you being able to see the future and knowing what Roma Dunze has in store for him for the rest of the season and really what his career outcome is going to be. But what I will do is kind of remind you, I don't even have to go back very far. Just a mere week ago, there was true panic that Marvin Harrison Jr. is no longer fast. He's not a very good football player and Kyler Murray doesn't want to throw to him and that's not his job. It took a mere week 
for that narrative to be completely put to bed. And now heading into week three, I'm sure everybody's going to just let him off the hook. They were just joking. That was just something silly they were saying. Everybody knows Marv's good. We tuck that under the rug and move on. Well, you move on if you want to. I'm not moving on. And while I'm not, and maybe you aren't, ready to write off the Bears' entire future with Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze and what that's going to turn into and be, there are people out there right now definitely willing to do so. Two weeks into the season, there's already some really goofy stuff going on with players that didn't have any type of dynasty value all of a sudden now having a big production rise and also dynasty value rise seismically hand in hand when that typically isn't always the case for these type of players. And basically what you're going to see here is that some of the trades gone down really are muddled up because of Jordan Mason being involved. But I just want you to understand Jordan Mason and Roma Dunze right now in Dynasty, the long-term play, they're closer than you might think. First right here, Greg Dortch and Jordan Mason in a lineup league. Get your Roma Dunze. But wait, there's more. Don't touch that dial because if you know that that person really wants Jordan Mason and is really aggressively trying to get him, whether it's to be the handcuff or to be the standalone value, Christian McCaffrey's dead. Either way, we will be putting in a second part of the deal for free, completely free. You'll get two valuable pieces. All you have to do right now is pick up that phone and dial 900 ATM move. Again, that's 900 ATM move. And all of a sudden, someone that really wants to get Roman Dunze off of their roster and get Jordan Mason from you, they will add in Tyler Algier in the upside play if something horrible was to happen to Bijan Robinson. That's all going to be included. Shipping and handling, all that. All you have to do is pay processing. That is something I can do for you today. I don't know who these people are. Now, if you don't have this money bag yo version, this crazy Jordan Mason value, don't worry, don't fret. We got plenty of other great deals for you. After James Conner clearly seizing the role, we have Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson. Package those both up together. You get Roma Dunze and a second round pick and a due to class in 2025. How about Wandell Robinson in a first? Do you care to get those off of your roster? And since we're already here and I wasn't going to do this, but I'm doing it anyway, I'm not going to tell you to sell Brock Bowers, okay? Because I know how much that would pain and hurt you. But I will tell you to just sell the whole damn position. Because after two weeks for Brock Bowers, he has looked to be him. And certainly at this point now, Everybody that was calling Sam Laporta, him, kind of surprised, you know, a couple weeks in. I'm sure better days are ahead for Sam Laporta, but you don't need to wait on that. I can get you right now. How about Sam Laporta for Roma Dunze in a first in a .75 tight end premium league? If you don't have Sam Laporta, of course you don't because you probably already moved him. But how about if you have Dalton Kincaid in the uninspiring start to his season? No one's clearly worried about because... Maybe that'll get you in the same league format. Roma Dunze in a second. And listen, chronic tight end overdominant syndrome is not something to take lightly. And certainly at this point, if you're not able and willing to get off of your Dalton Kincaid stance, it makes a lot of sense. It's going to take some time. Don't try to get yourself there in one day. We're here to help. Going into week three and just completely pivoting away from Dalton Kincaid, going cold turkey like that, not really something that's going to probably be sustainable for chronic tight end overvaluing syndrome. Shocking, I know, that Roma Dunze for the first two weeks of the season has not set the world on fire in the NFL. If you're able and willing, if you're confined it in your heart, give him an extra week even though you don't need to. Clearly the market is panicked that while extremely risky, Roma Dunze could end up paying off as a guy when we look back, similar to Marvin Harrison Jr. in just a week or two from now, where the entire situation completely shifts. And think about a guy like Garrett Wilson, Drake London. These guys still have a ton of questions about them, and they are inside of very, very high territory at the receiver position. Even though I'd like to keep draft picks on my team, if I can get Roma Dunze for a first in 25 or 26, which have gone down in any single league, that's too easy. Depending on my team and if I'm built the right way, I'd be willing to still send a first and a second for Roma Dunze. While you don't necessarily need to pay that, that's a money move. So there you have it. Those are my money moves going into week three of the NFL season. Season's already fast and furious at us. If you found this content useful and actionable, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button. And more importantly, let me know what you're going to do, who you're going to try to buy and target in your dynasty leagues. We'll see you back here next week for ATM's Money Moves.